Because it's been almost over a year since my last tank collection video, and since many of you requested it, in this video I'll be showing off my tank collection for 2019. So I hope you enjoy the video. Since the last year, I've made a lot of tanks for my channel. Not all of these were featured in videos, of course. Some of them I made on my free time, so some of you might not recognize any of these. But this right here is all of the tanks that I would call accurate. As you can see, there's not that many. There's some on the ground and there's somewhere, some other, some tanks that are somewhere else. But this is the shelf where I keep all my inaccurate tanks or uh, non-tanks, such as all these old ones. Now, the reason I keep all of these here is um, that I don't think they're that accurate. Uh, look at this KV-2, all these tanks. They're kind of outdated. I call these the Generation 1 cardboard tanks that I made. And uh, these are just uh, rubbish. They don't, they, they, they like somewhat resemble the original tank that I tried to make. Um, there's also Generation uh, Zero tanks, uh, ones that don't look like the tank at all. I might, be, I'll, I'll be covering some of these, but really fast and quick. And since this is a tank, this is a tank collection video, I will not be covering any other creations I made down here because I don't have enough of them. So welcome to my desk. Now, this desk I cleaned out just for this video, and uh, as you can see. I don't have the best lighting, so I have this stuff here. Anyways, this is Generation Zero cardboard tanks. The reason they are Generation Zero is because I divided each generation of tanks by their quality to their respective counterparts in real life. This is a Hago. This is a M26 Pershing. This is a Sherman. This is a Tiger II. And this is a T34. Now, if you know your history, you already see the problem. And I already went over these tanks in my other tank collection video. This is actually my first cardboard tank I've ever created. Uh, I made it about two years ago, roughly. And these uh, soon followed through. And this is actually the first tank I made for a how-to video on my channel. Anyways, you can tell, uh, if you're not a historian or whatever, you're not into history, but I'm pretty sure you're all into history or know about tanks, these are very inaccurate to their counterparts. This Hago looks somewhat, it doesn't look anything like the Hago. This M26 Pershing doesn't look anything like it. This M4 Sherman, the most, I mean, you can recognize this tank from a mile away if you're a World War II geek. And this Sherman has nothing in common. It, 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 looks, it looks hideous. Oh yeah, all of these are kind of broken. Their turrets aren't, uh, oh, they're not the best quality. Uh, construction. This T-34, it looks nothing like a T-34, but it does look like a cool tank. Other than that, they're all rubbish, and uh, this is why they're the Generation Zero tanks, because they have almost nothing in common with their original tanks. And that's because I made these, well, they're, these are my first tanks ever made, and also uh, made them a long time ago. And I, I never really followed the actual uh, tank, I just used it as inspiration. Now all these tanks are what I consider my Generation 1 tanks. Now there are some outliers, um, such as this Panzer III. This is actually a really old tank. And this Yag Panther, uh, I made a how-to video. This is my second how-to video tank. Um, I called it a Jag Panther before, but it's actually a Yag Panther. This one doesn't look that bad, but it's not that accurate either. But there are a lot of Generation one tanks because these are the tanks that I uh, well the quality of the tanks I made uh, increased a little bit over the years I mean I guess you could see some improvement I don't know so these are the tanks that I consider generation one so since there's so many of these the first one I'm gonna look at is uh, this custom tank now I made this tank uh, a while ago for a fan he challenged me to making a custom tank of his uh, the only thing that I'm proud of is the machine gun. The double turret is kind of broken, but I might use it in my future video. Next up are these um, more modern vehicles. Now I have this 
armored car that I made. I don't know if this is accurate because I'm not into armored cars, but the wheels do work and the turret is kind of uh, curved. It kind of inspired me to make the T55 turret, if you've seen that video. So this was an um, early version of the curved turret. This T90 though, this T90 was I think the third tank I've ever made. Now I wouldn't say this was too inaccurate, unlike the Abrams. This Abrams is so inaccurate, like it doesn't even look like an Abrams. I don't know why it's kind of curved in. I might make a new Abrams later on, uh, depending if I am. It. I'm not really into modern tanks, so that's why I usually work on World War II tanks. So if you request something modern, I probably won't do it. Sorry about that. Next up is my Mark V um, World War One tank. This is only World War One tank I made. And this is as well quite rubbish. The, the gun has broke. It's kind of small compared to other things. One big problem with these tanks is the scale, and I'll explain more about that later. Now we're going to be moving on to the World War II tanks and their respected countries. First off is the Russian tanks. There's the T26. Um, this wasn't too inaccurate, but it was kind of ugly. The stuff, the, these uh, early tanks look kind of rough. The KVs, the KVs I made a video on, and although they don't look that inaccurate, well, that's a lie. They, they, they somewhat resemble the original tank, but they are really inaccurate. The cupolas are kind of big because I wanted to fit other so soldiers in them, and that's not correct. And they're not long enough, and they're the same size as the T-34, which doesn't make any sense. And the T-34 here is kind of broken, battered up, uh, looks kind of messy, there's like cracks, there's, it, it, I didn't even, there's like, you know, I didn't fill in this uh, crack. This stuff looks dusty as well, and it kind of, it's kind of messy. The problem with me, these old tanks is that they look messy, and that's corrected in my uh, Generation 2 tanks. Now the BT-7 was a milestone. I, c I still consider this a Generation 1 tank because of its size. But it is pretty accurate. It's uh, although it's kind of small uh, in my terms, at least. It's and it's still messy, but um, it still uh, still resembles the tank. The Generation One American tanks. Now American tanks were my favorite because I live in America. But uh, yeah, my favorite tank was the M26 Pershing and the M3 Lee. Now I always said I was gonna do a good job on these tanks, but they. They still look inaccurate. The Hellcat looks nothing like the Hellcat. It, it's very ugly. The gun is kind of over, over, oversized. The tracks are kind of tilted out. This is what I call by messiness. Chaffy. The Chaffy is also ugly. The turret shape is is really weird. I don't know how I made that. The cargo looks, you know, ugly as well. It just looks like felt. One thing that was nice was this M3 Stewart that I made. This M3 Stewart, I was, it wasn't that bad, but it's still kind of messy and it's very small for its size. And finally, the Generation One German tanks plus this British tank because I only made a British one British tank. The Valentine, there's not enough to say about it. It's just really ugly and. Uh, the turret is rather small, so I'll be doing a remake of many of these later on. Now the German tanks, the problem with the German tanks is the scale. As, as you can see, the Tiger tank is the smallest one here, which doesn't make any sense. The Tiger II is bigger than the mouse. That also doesn't make sense. There's two Panthers here. The first Panther is this brown one. Now this brown panther, it got chewed up by my dog, and the turret looks is inaccurate. The body, everything's inaccurate. The only good thing about these tanks was that you can move the gun up and down and elevate it. And the mouse as well. The mouse is the mouse looks a little too uh, long, not wide enough. The tiger too, on the other hand, the turret is too big. Uh, that's all I gotta say. The turret's too big, and you know other inaccuracies. The other panther looks kind of ugly. Yeah, inaccuracy in all these tanks. And as you can see, this tiger tank is broken. The tiger tank is um, small, but it doesn't look that accurate too. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, Generation 2. Now, many of you haven't seen these tanks because I have not made tutorials for all of them. But the Generation 2 tanks, 
or Generation 2 because they look pretty accurate, accurate to the original tanks. So here are the Generation 2 tanks. Of course you can see a big difference. These are a lot bigger. They, well some of them shine if you can tell. But we'll look at, uh, look at them into closer detail uh, right now. Now believe it or not my first Generation 2 tank that I call accurate is the Bob Semple. I know there are some inaccuracies with this tank, but since the Bob Simple was rubbish and this tank, well my tank making skills back then were rubbish, it kind of looks, well, normal. And I I'm going to use this in a stop motion, another one at least. I'm going to make a meme stop motion about the Bob Simple being a god tank. Maybe in the future, I don't know. But yeah, this is what I consider my first generation to, uh, I think at least. But the tank that started it all was probably the Tiger 2. The Tiger 2 I made a remake of it because, well, the other Tigers looked kind of ugly. Now this Tiger 2, I don't know how accurate you would, could say it was. The turret is kind of different. This is actually a different version from if you search up pictures. Some pictures show the flat um, base. This is a early prototype version. So the turret looks different, but there, as you can see, a lot more details are made. There's a uh, holes in the muzzle brake. There's tools on the tank, everything's painted accordingly, and this camo is very nice. There's also some weathering done to it, and the cupola actually fits its whole soldier. This German commander, actually. And if you compare the, this uh, Tiger to its counterparts, the first one, you know, very small. The second one, a little bigger, and the third one is huge. And another one to mention is this Panzer IV. Now this is actually also ac uh, pretty accurate and it's actually the girls in Panzer, um, Panzer IV. I made it because I was kind of bored at my cousin's house and I was like, you know what, why not? So it has the symbols on it, it's brown and uh, although it looks kind of uh, messy, it still looks nice. The Thankfully these armored plates cover up many of the inconsistencies. So yeah, just a special a special mention. And also these markings, they were actually pretty hard to make. I had to use a toothpick to paint them. A very, very sharp tip. So if you ever want to paint those uh, symbols on it. I know modelers use like printed out ones. Those uh, things that you just glue on. But if you want to paint your own symbols, which is a lot harder, use a sharp edge, not a paintbrush. So now that's out of the way. It's time to go over the respected countries. First up is the British tanks. Now I have only made two British tanks. It's a Churchill, you know, one of the most iconic tanks of World War II. And this Archer. The Archer tank actually faces this way, but you know, I don't think you would like to see it that way. The Archer tank, uh, I never made a tutorial on it, but the Churchill I did. And the Archer tank uh, improved my skills because it actually has ventilation that you can see through. And the interior, the Archer tank has a lot of detail. I don't know if you can see it, but there are there is a, the gun in there. This is a pretty accurate tank, one of my best tanks I've made. And uh, I'll be sure to use it in my next stop motion. And one thing you can tell the difference, if you look at my Generation 1 tanks, and my Generation 0, you can see that the wheels are just bland, cut out circles. And one person in particular that helped me improve my wheel design was Armies of Plastic Studios. And I'm in a chat with him and he urged me to improve my wheel design. So that's why on these new tanks they have more detailed wheels. While my older tanks such as this tank has just circle wheels. So these are the British tanks. Next up are the German tanks and I'm not going to be showing the Panzer IV from the one I showed earlier. So here's my other Panzer IV. This was a challenge Panzer IV, so that's why it's so detailed. It has weathering, it has rust, um, and this was an experiment uh, to see how, how, much, how detailed I can make it. This Panzer IV isn't that accurate actually. The shape is a little bit twisted, but it is very um, detailed. It has a lot of dust, it looks really grimy, if you can tell. And I didn't make a tutorial on this, but I might make another Panzer IV tutorial soon. The Stug. The Stug III is also a German tank I made. And this one, it looks pretty nice. It had the old wheel design, which kind of sucks. But other than that, I think it looks pretty accurate. The gun as well. And the Martyr II. This is my most accurate German tank by far. And I've only made three German tanks because I've only been making Generation 2 quality tanks for 
a short time. So I'll be making Panther, you know, those, you know, more popular German tanks uh, later on. Oh, and I also forgot the Tiger II, which is kind of dumb, and the E100 aluminum tank I've made. So if you saw the aluminum tank video, it was a challenge to make a super tank, and I chose to make the E100 out of aluminum. So these are um, aluminum, aluminum can sheets, and this is a metal pencil. And I think I might use this as a super tank later on. The only cardboard part of this tank is the tracks. The Tiger II, as I said, was a milestone. Very detailed and uh, very big. And the Martyr II is still my most detailed tank, most accurate at least. It has tools on the side, the wheel design is nice, tracks, everything, and the interior is also really nice, and the camouflage. Now these are some other country um, tanks. So here is a Chiha, and I've made this not that long ago. It's uh, pretty accurate I would say. I think the front is a little screwed up. Here's a VT42. Uh, it's kind of dirty, the front, the turret, it's kind of messy. And um, yeah, this is a Finnish tank. And this is a Chinese Type 64. This tank is also kind of messy. It has an old wheel design, but they were all stepping stones um, to make better tanks. This is my best uh, tank by far. This is the, what is it called? Uh, other countries class of tanks. So yeah, next up are the Russian tanks. Now I haven't made that many Russian tanks, um, World War II Russian tanks at least, but they are all pretty nice. Now this one I bet you haven't seen is the IS-3. The IS-3 is, um, well it is pretty accurate in my opinion, I think so at least. I had to make, I had to remake the IS-3's uh, turret, so this is the old turret right here. Now the T-55, the T-55 is my most recent how-to video and uh, you can see it, it's very special because, well these Russian tanks are special because they both have dome shaped turrets. The T-55 is, um, well I made it uh, like half a year ago and I only uploaded the video now so although it's pretty nice it still has the old wheel design and some ugly, uh, some weird, weird um, details but it is not that bad overall and the IS-3 is probably the most detailed one here it has a moving uh, gun unlike this one which doesn't hold its stable real nice and this uh, this is this is a very favorite Russian tank I'm not gonna have any uh, tutorial videos on this though and now here are the tanks that I've been longing to talk to about for quite a while and these are the American tanks now I've said that before but the American tanks are my favorite now the oldest American tank I have here I think is the M3 Stewart the M3 Stewart is pretty accurate, in my opinion. Um, it has bolts even on the tank. If you check out my Instagram, you would have seen this tank already. This tank was also rel really revolutionary for my tank design um, career. <sighs> I think it was the first tank to... Well, it was, a, it was after the Tiger II. And this was really accurate. It's a different version of the M3 Stewart. And if you look at the old M3 Stewart tank, it's rather small. And this is what I was talking about earlier. The Generation 1 and Zero tanks are really small compared to these tanks. The Sherman, my old Sherman, was the same size as the Stuart. And also the Sherman isn't balanced well. Kind of weird. Kind of a similar trope with these old tanks. So this Stuart doesn't match this Stuart at all. Next up is the M3 Priest. Or the M7 Priest, I meant. The M7 Priest is also something I'm really proud of. The gun is correct, everything is pretty accurate for this tank. It has nice details such as these handles right here. And the back is nice. And also the interior. The interior has the gun and the breech and it also has ammunition inside. I wish the camera could see inside of it and I wish I had better lighting. The M3 Elite is also another revolutionary tank. It also has bolts. and. Um, uh, with these Generation 2 tanks, I've gotten better at making scale. As you can see, the M7 and the M3 have the same chassis, the Sherman chassis, so 
they are about the same width, actually, almost the same, but the M3 piece is a little bit longer because as I uh, don't take the measurements. The M24 Chaffee is, well, I wouldn't say perfectly accurate, but I th do think the turret is a little small. It should be a slightly bigger, but maybe I'm being too picky, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. If you see any of these, in if you think any of these Generation 2 tanks are inaccurate, please tell me because I really need the information. And the tank also has antennas, which I started adding nowadays. The M26 Pershing was a recent tank I made, and the reason I have so many uh, American tanks um, made for Generation 2 is because I'm going to be working on a stop motion that requires them. So I'll be making two more American tanks and maybe a couple German tanks later on so I can work on my stop motion. The M26 Pershing, I don't know if this is accurate, but my friend did tell me that the front is a little too steep, but I guess I'll be fine. Um, the gun can move up and down, but it doesn't stay up that well, which I might have to fix. Other than that, this tank is also really recently made. One good thing about it is that uh, this cupola can move up and down. You can move it up and down. There you go, I fixed it. So you can't move it up and down. It doesn't fit perfectly because I don't use measurements. I just use eye uh, measurements using my eyeballs. And you can put a toy soldier in there, which is 3D printed. And if you haven't seen my 3D printed army men video, you should. And finally, the M4 Sherman, or the EZ-8 Sherman, this variant at least. This tank is the most recent tank I've made and people have requested it a lot. And if you go and compare, this uh, size difference is really big. This Sherman looks very bland, very um, dull, not too much going on with it. This Sherman, it's getting closer to the shape. It's still really dull, it has weird things. It's kind of too tall, even though it's like one half the size of this Sherman. It's the same height, and this Sherman it's super detailed. The stars are uh, handmade. I never used a measurements on any of my tanks. The back is nice. The wheel design, the wheel design is nice too. So this is a tank I'm very proud of and the tutorial for this tank will actually come out in a week or two once I'm done editing it and photographing it. And as you can see from this, you can see how, how far I've gone. And if you compare the other tanks as well, the M26 Pershing. M26 Pershing, as you can see, the first variant, very small, out of scale, very dusty. This one, getting closer, it has small turret, but it is getting closer to the actual thing. And this one, which is very shiny, very glamorous, and very detailed. And I really think the M4 Sherman variants that I've made sum up this video entirely. This video was to showcase my, uh, well, to showcase my tanks, of course, but it's also to mark my uh, improvement that I've noticed in my past years. It's been two years that I've started making cardboard tanks in, uh, I think, I think so. And there's been a lot of improvement and I've, I've seen a lot of my fans um, cardboard tanks as well on Instagram or on Facebook, actually not on Facebook, but on their channels. So. If you give enough time, I bet you can improve. And uh, yeah, so so thank you all for watching this tank collection video. I might have missed out on some tanks like the AV7 and some other creations, but I don't really want to include them in this video. So yeah, I'm just kind of lazy. So thank you all for, well, yeah, thank you all my fans for encouraging me and uh, commenting on all my videos. That's really what kept me going for these how-to videos. Also, I like to thank this chat I have. I used to have, well, I still have. I post my tanks on there and some people criticize them, some people like them, and it helps me improve my tanks. So, I thank all of you and after another year of making tanks, I just really thank my uh, fan base. So, finally, thank you all for watching. Follow me on Instagram at Nim Productions and uh, See you soon.